I've had a lot of requests on how to edit videos from course creators. Now I know, there's no shortage of videos on YouTube to edit videos. I mean, there's like thousands of them. But the thing is, most of them are, well, they're just too complicated. They totally miss the point. If you're creating a course or you're doing a video for say a video sales letter or whatever, you don't really want to learn how to edit videos. It's, it's not really your passion to learn the finer skills of video editing. It's, it's more of something that you've just got to do if you want people to view your content. I get it. It's a case of learning how to edit so you can make money. And then, then you can pay somebody else to edit your videos. You make money by creating content, not by editing videos. So, I intended this video to be aimed at entrepreneurs who just want to learn the basics of editing to get their content out to the world. So if you're looking for fancy editing techniques, color grading, all that kind of complicated stuff, this is not the video for you. This is like video editing 101. In fact, I should have called it editing for people who don't want to edit. How's that for a title? But before we get started, I've also got a present for you. Call it a bribe. If you subscribe to my channel and you stay till the end of this video, I've just released an ebook. It's a guide to getting started creating professional video. And it's very detailed. Covers all the equipment, the software, and there's loads of tips, tricks, and all that kind of stuff you need to know to create professional looking video without spending a lot. And it's free. So stay till the end and I'll give you the link. Anyway, when I was thinking about creating this video, I was going through all the programs that you can use to edit. And I've used most of them at some point. But I wanted an editing program that would work on both PC and Mac, is easy to use, and ideally is, well, is free. I mean, free is always good, right? The solution I came up with is DaVinci Resolve. Now, I use this from time to time myself, so I'm very familiar with it. Now, before we dive into the lesson, I just want to say something because I don't want you freaking out at me. Remember, my number one priority here is making this easy. DaVinci Resolve is a very powerful editing program. I mean, with this, with this application, you could produce films for Hollywood, but you can also use it in super simple mode. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing. So don't go freaking out when I open it up. I promise this is going to be really simple. Are you ready? So here we go. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is open up DaVinci Resolve. And when it opens, you've got this panel here. It displays all your past projects. If you've worked on something before, you could select it from here. But since we've not, we're going to set up a new project. So I'll come down here, select new project. I'll give it a name, editing video, and then click create. It now drops us into this interface and you're thinking, oh, look how complicated this looks. Don't worry, we're going to be going into beginner's mode. We aren't going to be using 99% of all this here, so just stay with me. But what you've got to do next is tell it what settings to use. Now, you've only got to do this once for each project. After that, it remembers. Down here, bottom right, there's this little gear icon. If I click that, it now gives us our project settings. And you're like, are you serious, Andrew? Don't worry, we've only got to change a couple of things in here. First, up here at the top is the size of your video under timeline resolution, and it says 1920 by 1080, which is HD. So if you've shot your video in HD, you'll be fine. But say you filmed it in 4K, well, that's not going to be an issue because DaVinci will just scale it for you. So if you're outputting your video to say YouTube or you're using Kajabi or Teachable or, or some other platform, you're going to be just fine with HD. That's pretty much the standard. So you don't need to touch that. What you will likely have to change are these settings here, timeline frame rate and playback frame rate. Now, if you're in North America, the chances are you want 30 frames per second. But if you're in the UK or Europe like me, you're going to want 25 frames per second. So a lot for 25 frames per second. And notice it's also changed the playback frame rate for us. So I'll click save and that's it in there. There we go. We're all set up and ready to roll. Now the next thing, we've got to get our footage into DaVinci so we can edit it. Now if you look down here at the bottom, we've got these icons. Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Colour, Fairlight and Deliver. But the good news is we're only going to use two of them. We're going to use edit, which of course is to edit the video 
and deliver. And that's what we're going to use to export your video once we've edited it. So I'm going to click on edit. Now, don't worry, I'm going to be covering this interface in a minute and showing you what you need to know. But first, let's bring in our media. Can you see over here where it says no clips in the media pool? This is our media bin. So I'm going to right click and then click import media. There's the videos I want to bring in. So I'll select the first one, hold the shift key down to select the last one. And that selects them all. And then I'll click open. And that's it. All our files are imported. Now, if I want to see what's in each of these videos without having to open them, if I mouse over and then slowly move my mouse, you get a preview. It shows you the video. I really like that. It's actually really useful. So anyway, we've got our media imported. We're now all ready to go. Now the editing takes place here. This is the timeline. So let me just bring a video down. I'll just drag it onto the timeline like that. Let me show you a few little things to make this a little easier. This little button here, if I click that, down here, there are a couple of sliders. I can make the tracks bigger. I like to see the audio track. It helps me edit. I can tell where the video starts and stops by looking at the audio. So I'll make that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to make the video just a little bit bigger. There we go. That's that done. Now, I also like to have an extra video track and an extra audio track in case, say, I'm using B-roll or I'm adding image overlays on my video. So I'll right click on the video track and then click add track. That's now added me another video track and I'm going to do the same for the audio, say in case I want to add a music track later. So I'll just click there, I'll add track and I want mono. So I've now down here got a spare audio track. So we're all ready to get started. So I'll just remove this video here so we've got a nice clean sheet, so to speak. So I'll select it and hit delete. And now I'll bring down my first clip. So I'll bring down video one, drop it onto the timeline. Now, you see this big red bar here? If I scrub this, it plays through the timeline. It shows you what's playing Audio as I'm scrubbing. And to play the video, I can either hit this button here. Audio is a huge part of building a connection with your audience. Getting good audio, is... or the way I normally like to do it, is just hit the space bar on my keyboard to play it. If you're a content creator, is... And then hit it again to stop. Now, before we actually get into editing the video, you see this little slider here? This allows me to zoom in and out of the track. It makes it a whole lot easier. And these buttons, they allow me to zoom in. I use these a lot. They really do help during the editing process. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. And we'll just move the track to the beginning. Now, when I'm editing, like I've said, I like to use the audio track as an indicator as to where to cut the video. I can see the areas where I start talking. So the audio track is an indicator to where you should be cutting. So zooming in using this button up here makes a lot of sense. It makes life a whole lot easier. Now, looking at the audio track here, you can see here where I start talking. So all this blank space here needs to be removed. Now, there are a few ways I could do this. I could bring my cursor to the edge of the clip. And when it changes to a single line with a little arrow, I can just drag back till it removes a silent part like that. Now, I could use a technique called ripple edit, but we won't do that. I just want to keep this super simple and I may cover that in another video. Anyway, now I've trimmed the clip there. We've got all this blank space here. So if I just click the blank space and then hit delete, bam, it's gone. Now, the other way I can trim clips is by cutting them. So I'll just undo that with control Z. And move to the front of the clip. If I select the razor tool up here, or I could just hit B on the keyboard. There's a shortcut and I just click, say, there and then press A to select the pointer and then click the bit I want to remove and then click delete, then click to select the empty space and then click delete again. There we go. Now I need to do the same at the end of my clip. So I'll just move to the end of the clip. And it looks like I stopped talking about that to your environment. There. Just there. And this is where being zoomed in really helps. You can get it pretty much spot on. So I'll just move to the end of the clip, mouse over the end, and then drag back to there like that. I'll bring down my next video. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And I can see I start to talk round about here. 
just about there. So I'll go to the beginning of the clip, mouse over, drag. Now notice how it snapped the red line. That's because I've got this little magnet turned on and you can turn it on and off as you need, but I actually find it useful. So I normally leave that turned on. Then I'll just select the blank space and hit delete. See, this editing isn't hard at all. And I'll go to the end of that clip and we'll do the same again. This time I'll just drag to where I stop talking, which is about there. And there we go. Okay, so up to now we've trimmed clips, but what if there's say a sectionary video, say in the middle of a clip that you want to remove? Say you've made a mistake or something. Well, it's pretty much the same as trimming the beginning or end really. All we do is let me go to the front of the clip here. And let's say we want to cut out this section here. I'll select the razor. And we want to say there. And I'll just select that. And then let's say we want to cut it really out to, to there. And then I'll cut that. Select A on the keyboard for the pointer. Select the clip and delete it. And then select the space and delete that. And there we go. Now I just want to show you something. What we've done with this edit now, we've got this jump and it's very jarring. What you can do to hide this, you can zoom in. Now, once I've shown you this, you'll be amazed at how many other videos you see this in and it actually looks like you're using two cameras. What you do is select the clip here, come up to the inspector and if the inspector isn't open, you just click inspector there. I'll make sure the playback edit is over the part of the video I'm working on so I can see what's going on. And I'm just going to zoom in to about, I think about 1.3 like that. And then I'll just frame myself properly. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit like that. And I'm going to move myself across. Now, the trick is when you do this is to keep the eyes in, appro in approximately the same position. If you do that, it actually looks pretty natural. So when we play this back now to your environment. So we're going to look at doesn't that look so much better? That's how you hide a cut that's jarring. And when you finish editing, the last step is to export your video. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But I just want to say there's so much more that you can do in Resolve. You can add images, create text overlays, lower thirds, edit your audio, all with just a couple of clicks of your mouse. And I'll cover these in a later video. Anyway, once you've edited your video, the last stage is to export it. If you come down here to the delivery tab at the bottom, it loads this sidebar and you can input your own settings in here if you like, but it's also got some pre-built presets. And for most cases, I've found the YouTube preset works well. So we'll just click that. I'll enter a name. Video finished. Select the location I want the file to be saved in. And I'll save it to my movies folder. Click save and then select add to render queue. But it's not exporting your movie yet. Over here on the right, it's just queued it ready to be rendered. To export your movie, you've got to hit the render all button. And when you do, it starts to export your video to the save location. So I'll just select render all. And when you do, it starts to export your video to your save location. Well, there we go. That's how easy the basics are. Now, I really would have liked to have shown you more, but this video is already getting a little bit on the long side. And I didn't want to overwhelm you with all the, the bells and the whistles of video editing. I'll likely follow this video up with a, a few more that show you how to add a, a little bit of polish to your presentations, text overlays, using graphics, doing transitions and stuff like that. In fact, let me know in the comments what you'd like to learn. Now, I hope this video has helped you. If it did, you might want to grab my free ebook on getting set up to create professional looking video. I think you'll like it. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. So until next time, bye for now.